citizens in town would really care to have that call at 5 in the morning. But if they want to be put on the list, hey, I don't have a problem with it. Question comments from the audience. Dave St. Cyr clarifies because I have worked on these systems and they're, they're not open to the public. It's something the school works on. The school gets parental permission to include their information in that system. Okay? There is not a town-wide database to support a town-wide phone system yet. If the town wants to work in conjunction with the school district, I would sure they'd be more than willing to do it. But in this case here, that is a, a system that only... <coughs> Uh, works for the school, and the parents have to give their permission to be included on it. I'm sorry. Thank you. Questions from the audience? Good evening, Lawrence Tilly. A uh, question directed specifically at Mr. Miller. Considering the uh, wealth of negative comments that you've made both in the newspaper and on the budget committee over the last two years, directed at the SEU and the school board. Uh, what are your plans specifically to integrate yourself in as a team player should you be elected? Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not just on the budget committee. Um, uh, also on the ZBA. There's never been a contentious moment in two years um, with my participation on the ZBA. And uh, anybody can check the minutes with that. I've talked to any of the members. I've been on two committees in the past year here at Dalton Central School. I've been on the compact <coughs> committee, which consisted of administration, teachers, parents, and people like myself. But I don't believe there was one, and one contentious moment uh, during any of those meetings at any time. And you can, you can check with uh, the administration on that. I've also been on the SAU study committee. And I can't remember one contentious moment on the study committee as well. So it seems to be, you know, the only contentious um, area is with the school board. That being said, I will do everything in my power to make it a harmonious relationship. But my priority has been and always will be the children. The children will always come first. I will always fight for the children. To, I will fight to make sure they get the resources they need, to get the best teachers they can possibly get, and they're not wanting for anything. That's, that's my priority. I hope, I hope to make a harmonious relationship, okay? And I will make an effort to, but the kids come first. Keith, would you like to address uh, what Steve just talked about? Sure. Um, well, uh, I've never had a huge problem with the school board that we had. Um, they move in a positive way. Do I agree with everything they say? No. I, I just had a comment the other night. I didn't agree with uh, uh, how the GPA and lettering, uh, you know, letter grades went for honors and high honors. Um, but that's, you know, that's the way it goes. But at least they're moving forward in a positive way. I spend 90% of my time uh, doing children's activities, coaching baseball, soccer, basketball, Cub Scouts, things like that. Uh, I move in a positive way with my children and with the kids that I coach and help out. And I think I would blend in very easily with the school board. Terry? It's very difficult when you attend a budget committee meeting and you're told by the chairman of the budget committee, Mr. Miller. I'm not the chairman. When I attended the meeting, you were mm -hmm. the chair and you're told that you really need to tell somebody on your, on your board that they are to be, the, you're to appoint somebody to be the budget committee rep. And then the next year, you're called and a, a trade, um, I have lost my train of thought, I'm sorry. Um, a dictator by this person. Um, I, I just, I, I don't like name calling. Wait a minute. Are no, no, I'll speak. Let, let her finish. I was, I was called a traitor, uh, a dictator. I vote. In the newspaper. Okay. 
Other questions from the audience? Those kind of things are hard to get to. Jeffrey St. Cyr. Um, my question is for all three of you. Since you all are here running for public office, when you've campaigned for public office and with your experience serving in public office for two of you in the past and Mr. Duby running for the first time, is your, do you like to run on campaigns that focus on the issues or personal character assassinations to try and win? We'll start with you, Keith. Your turn. Uh, I would love to focus on the issues. Um, you know, I don't want to beat anybody up. I, I just want to serve the children, you know, and I am for the children, and that's where I spend most of my time is with the children. Terry? I don't think I've ever, ever, ever had a campaign that has done like this. You know, name calling. I, I just, it's, it's, it's the worst it's ever been. And I've been through a lot of elections. Steve? Just the issues. Questions from the audience? Barbara Howard. Mr. Duby, did you or did you not recently um, go around saying some very negative things about Mr. Miller and uh, having to do with his finances? Be careful how you answer because... Yeah, I was told that his finances weren't that great. Did I say anything negative? Yes. I don't agree with a lot and of what you And you don't consider that a smear campaign? I don't know how it could be. It's not false. And um, do you recall when you served on the budget? Oh, one, one question. Okay. That's a question. And I'm not allowed another question. Well, we don't want to go after someone at that tone. Okay. So but, but I didn't create these rumors. But you said them. You just said you said them. Someone talked to me about them, sure. But I didn't spread them around. I didn't create them. I, but do I know about them? Sure. I heard it from three it's different people. It's public knowledge. It's in the newspaper. I heard it from three different people. It came directly from you. Smear campaign. Oh, please. Oh, Questions? Let's get some more positive, folks. Now, David, I'm looking for something positive from you. <laughs> I am going to start by saying something positive. And I'm going to say that I want to thank Mr. Miller or whoever did it that removed that sign, the campaign sign, from Monument Square. When I saw that three days ago, I went ballistic. And I, I myself wanted to remove it. But I went to Town Hall, I went to the Legion, and finally something got done about it. That to me is akin to putting a campaign sign in a cemetery. That's the way I view those monuments. And if Mr. Miller, that was your choice to do that, that was an obviously an extremely is there, poor choice. Is there a question? I mean, I said I was gonna make a comment. Hmm? Okay. Yeah. I thought this was for questions. It is for questions. Well, I had you wanted to hear a positive comment from me. No, I wanted you got a it. positive question. <laughs> positive question? <laughs> yeah, I have a positive question. It happens to involve Mr. Miller. And in this case here, I'm going to lead into this, lead into this by his article in the Bay Sider on the 22nd of December, where he basically ridiculed a member of my family for not having paid taxes in Alton. And in order, if anybody is aware of what the tax scenario is in Alton, you've got to have two things. You either got to have property that you pay taxes on, or you've got to have a car that you register and you pay taxes on. In this case, that member of my family has neither. So he has no reason and no legal obligation to pay taxes in this town. Secondly, I would like to know what Mr. Miller plans to do. Get a question out on this. Okay, there is a question coming. Because it involves Mr. Miller. All right? I have a question for Mr. Miller. Go ahead. And that question is, where do you plan on being living after March 21st, when your house goes on the market for a foreclosure auction, for non payment of tax? Enough of that. Enough of that. Uh, that that's, enough, that's enough of it. We don't, we don't want to go down that road. We don't want to go down that road. But it's true. And the voters all know that. That's enough. Let's have, uh, some, let's have some positive statements. Steve would like to address that, so Steve, go ahead. What did I say, Mr. Doobie? Steve, I don't know anybody else. Do you want to address that? I want to address one thing. Yeah, okay. I think that, I, I think that, I don't think that you have I think that you've lost control of this um, 
this forum. So I'm really disappointed that you would let somebody come out with lies like that, you know, and character assassinate, you, should, you know, and not do a thing about it. No. I would recommend that you call for a 10 minute recess to Yes, create. that's a good idea. We we'll have a 10 minute research. Of the crowd, yeah. perhaps. Uh, the questions for this group are done. As far as questions, I'll give them a one minute wrap up. When they come back, we'll take a five minute uh, rest period here. I believe that was out of order. We do not do that in the town of Alton. It was a personal attack. I want to remind you of the school district meeting where a member got up and spoke how we have to act appropriately and civil to each other. There was quite a speech at the end of that. There was a speech at the end of the town meeting. And to attack him at this hat, we haven't all had hard times money-wise. And to attack him like that, I'm asking you that he be removed from the... He will not speak again. Uh, he can leave if he likes, but he will not speak again. Thank you. How about Mrs. Fowler? She's the one that asked the question first. Yeah. Yeah. She left. She left. Mark that. I'd like to make a statement. Go ahead. All right. I'm going to allow Steve to make a statement because he was the one who was attacked. Steve, go ahead. Thanks. I can't sit, I just can't sit here. Um, when, when a lie is said, and especially when his boy comes out in the newspaper with no more character assassinations going forward, I guess he didn't read the article. That being said, I had a balloon mortgage that came due. I had some, I had, I had some difficulty uh, on financing, and I have since received the loan modification, and I'll be living there for the next 20 years. That's the bottom line. Good. Okay? Thank you, Steve. Thank, Thank you very much. And uh, as, as moderator, as moderator, I'd like to apologize to the group if this thing got a little out of hand. You don't know whether it's going to be an attack until after it's open, after it's done, and it's very difficult to control something like that. Uh, I'll apologize to you because I shouldn't let it get to that point, and I'll apologize to the audience because it shouldn't have got to that point. So, uh, what we're going to do now is allow up to a one-minute presentation summary, if you'd like. Uh, we start with you, Terry. Steve, we'll ask you to... Uh... All right. Thank you. Okay, first of all, I'm running, I'm running to make sure that no teacher is wanting for books, supplies, or any resources they need to complete their mission of teaching excellence. I'm willing to do whatever it takes, whether it's lobbying the state or writing grants or... Uh, Deal, uh, dealing with the business community so that the kids never want for anything. This is, this, this is not the right time for the, uh, to build um, a uh, $22 million school. I think uh, the opportunity may be in a year or two down the road. I think we should take those dollars that we have now and we should fix the school at, up to a level that we can be proud of. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Keith. Um, as a taxpayer myself in this town, I have enjoyed the uh, low tax rate. Um, it's one of the lowest in the state, as far as I know. Um, I am for the renovation. I think this is the right time. History has proven that uh, things don't get any cheaper. Uh, gas right now going through the roof. Um, recently talking with my uh, um, tax accountant up in Wolfboro. Uh, he sits on the uh, board for Huggins Hospital. And they were delayed six months up there in construction of the hospital uh, back at the beginning of this whole fiasco that we're all in. And uh, it changed their bid by $3 million, an increase in fuel and uh, labor costs. Um, I don't see a problem with uh, $3.58 a week uh, to put forward for my children's safety and their education. Um, 
if I were to get on the school board, I'm going to make decisions uh, that I think is best for the children without trying to make a huge impact for John Q. taxpayer because I don't want to pay any more than the next guy. And uh, the children are the future, and we're all in it together. Thank you. Terry? I'd like to thank you all for coming again. Uh, when I make decisions at meetings, I use my heart, my conscience. I sleep well at night. Sometimes I make good decisions. Sometimes I don't. I try not to look back um, and look at the decisions I've made. Um, I don't have any hidden agendas. I try to do what's right for the kids and the, and the community. And I would appreciate your vote on March 13th. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, your candidates uh, for school board. As we have in the past, uh, you can make up to a two-minute uh, presentation, Mark. Okay. Thank you very much, Mark, the uh, Rotary Club for this, and everybody in attendance. I uh, moved to Alton in 1999 uh, with my uh, three children and my wife of 21 years. We do uh, homeschool our uh, children. Uh, I've been coming up to Alton all my life, up to the Alton Bay uh, Christian Conference Center. I spent uh, 21 years in the military serving in the CBs and the New Hampshire National Guard, 14 years enlisted, and then went through OCS to uh, become a commissioned officer, retiring in 2007. I do hold a bachelor's degree in business from the Southern New Hampshire University. I've sat on the budget committee for three years as uh, vice chair and budget chair this year, and I'm, uh, I started my own business in 2004. Uh, a machine shop in Epsom, New Hampshire. Thank you very much. Thank you. Steve. Yeah. Uh, hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, it's good to see we had a very good turnout tonight. It's better than I've seen in the past. Um, I've been on the board. I know a lot of people here. Uh, I've been in town for 20-something years now, and uh, when I originally came up here, I used to own the, uh, the busy corner store. Most people know it as Amy Lynn's now. Um, as a matter of fact, Mark's father worked for, for me. It was and, known as a Papa Cow store, too. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it, uh, you know, I've been, I wanted to get involved here so that I could make a difference. And I talked with a number of different people and they had asked me back then to run for selectmen and uh, they liked uh, the way I thought and the way I felt. And it's a beautiful town and I wanted to be involved in it. And do my part, and I'll be do my share. So that's what I did. I got on board. Oh, it's almost 12 years now, and uh, I've enjoyed it. I've learned a lot. Uh, I've sat on a number of other boards. Unfortunately, the last couple of years I've been sick and. Uh, that, but I'm over that. I've been operated on and whatever, but uh, you can't do wrong, I don't think, either with me or with Mr. Peacock, because I know him also. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions for the candidates from the audience? My question is Your name for first, please. Karen Poor. I'm a cemetery trustee. And my question is for Mr. DeCoff because he is, if he's elected, are you aware that the town had in the recent past a warrant article and they asked the citizens if they wanted the selectmen to run the cemetery or the cemetery trustees? And the cemetery trustees were 
nominated where they won the Lawrence article. If elected, are you going to try to micromanage the select the cemetery trustees? Or are you going to respect the wishes of the townspeople and let us run it to the best of our ability and hopefully do as good a job as we've been doing? Unfortunately, we're not going to have the leadership of somebody who knows all the ins and outs, and it's not going to be a pleasant year ahead. And it would be nice to know that somebody is not going to be giving, making it more difficult. Mark? Uh, three years ago when I started on the budget committee, it was brought to our attention that the trust fund was running out of money, mm -hmm. and something needed to be done. I believe that the voters want to have the trustees run the cemetery. That's the way it should be until the voters decide that they want to change it in a different direction. Now, you just, we just have to get the select board and the trustees to work together and try to get some, some, some working relationship so everybody can be happy at once. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Steve, would you care to address that? Uh, yeah. Um, my feeling on it is, is, and I believe the rest of the board, and I won't speak for them really, uh, is that it's running out of money, so it's going to be coming out of taxpayers' money. So if the taxpayers are paying it, why not have the selectmen run it? That's my feeling on it. Okay. Other questions from the floor? This will be positive. Jeff Jeffrey Sands here. I only speak for myself. I want to make that very clear. Uh, you know, my question when I ask the three school board candidates how they like to campaign, either on focusing on the issues or um, attacking character, and the three of them did answer, which I believe is the correct answer, focusing on the issues. Um, today I wrote a letter to the editor that came out in today's Bay Sider that really addressed this issue. Do we focus on the issues? or do we focus on each other, and then at the end of the day, really, if we don't focus on the issues, I think the community loses. But one of my statements I had uh, about tonight, we can focus on the issue of where we want to see our community go over the next five years, how schools and town and the town are managed, the curriculum taught in our schools, and how the school and town can work collaboratively together with boards, commissions, and trustees in Alton. How would you like to see boards, trustees, uh, and commissions that come under the town of Alton, as well as the Alton School Board, uh, work together in the coming years. Thank you. Steve, we'll start with you on that. Well, um, there's no place in there for character assassinations, uh, which happened a little bit earlier. And, uh, you know, uh, if the taxpayers wanted run by the trustees, it's the taxpayers' wishes. So you have to follow the taxpayers' wishes. Unless you feel that um, there's, there's not enough money there for them to run it themselves, then we need to take it over if we're putting in the taxpayers' money. Can I just clarify my question? Yeah. It wasn't, this wasn't related to the cemetery trustees. This was completely different. How can you see, foresee the like, town boards and the school board working together? Would you like to see uh, joint meetings? Would you like to see uh, cooperative purchasing? Would you like to see a joint website? You know, we have so many resources with the Conservation Commission, the library trustees. Uh, I know there's a historical society. Not necessarily not a public body, but there's a historical society. How can we, together in a town, have all of these groups work together for the common good. What are some of the things that you might like to see if you're re-elected as a, as a Board of Selectmen member, or for Mr. Coffey, if he's elected as a Board of Selectmen member, how would you like to see these town boards work together? Yeah, go ahead. I'd like to see, you know, uh, maybe two, three times a year, the, all these boards get together, sit down, go over where they are, what they're doing, we haven't had a town historian, I remember, for the longest time. Um, 
I'm looking at you. <laughs> I keep asking her, and she had tur turned me down a number of times. I think it's important to remember the history of the town. You know, this is a beautiful town. I mean, I moved up here, and uh, but I'd like to see us get together three times, four times a year, and you know, bang our heads together and let each other know what the other group is doing and try to work towards it, you know, and see what we can do to help them, see what they can do to help us, and go from there. Thank you, Steve. Mark? Well, uh, it's obvious that uh, everybody's got different beliefs in the town. That's what makes America so great as, as a country. But what I think possibly could happen is each chairperson from each committee, maybe once a quarter, could get together, discuss things, see which directions. Right, right now, we had a CIP. Nobody's on the CIP anymore. So now it's up to the school board to present their capital improvements, and it's up to the budget committee. And it's whatever they decide, not the public's, it would be the public's input at the meetings if, if people go. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions from the floor? Christopher Gerofalis. Um, being a school board member myself, I know that sometimes it can be difficult when you have accusations of non-transparency or, or perceived issues with it. I know I take it to heart because I was the recording secretary for the budget committee. I've done selectmen's meeting minutes, I've done school boards. I've seen how each of the committee's boards, etc., operate. Everyone serving on those have my respect. I've had situations where we would, I would describe as severe disagreements. Um, situations where people get a little beyond passionate about their cause. I don't hold grudges and Mark knows that. We've talked, right? I want to know in light of those perceptions what you would do to make a difference um, in transparency with the um, Board of Selectmen and I'm not saying that or implying that the Board of Selectmen are not transparent. I'm just saying what you would do about those perceptions. Let's start with you, Mark. Well, one of the things is, is I'd like to limit the uh, work, close workshops to only if it's personal issues or legal issues. And, and then uh, every other workshop, I'd like to uh, be open to the public. And the workshops during the day, people can't show up during the day, so that there's not much public input for that. So I'd like to see them held in the evening. Thank you. Steve? Yeah, um, the workshops, that, um, when I first came on the board, we used to always have our meetings at 6 o'clock at night. And if that kind of limited the pool of people that were able to serve on these boards, and there are a lot of smart people in this town who could give real good information and expertise <coughs> in different things. But, you know, if you have, you know, meetings during the day, you, you're kind of stuck, you know, because you only have that pool. So, I mean, I don't have a problem with meetings in the hour at night. Most people work during Other questions? Mary B. Perhaps this is Mary B. Longabaugh. Perhaps this is more of a comment than a question, but it is a question. A lot of these workshops, I do believe, have happened in the Heike room, and I hope all the selectmen are aware that there is a camera and a whole setup for those meetings to be taped and Bob will be very glad to come teach anybody who needs to know how to turn the camera on and get the tape going so that these meetings can also be taped and there for the public. Thank you. Thank you. Steve, you want to say anything about that? Well, a 
lot of times we may be dealing with personnel issues, uh, litigations, things legal, ramifications, you think they could have legal ramifications on us. So they have to be done behind closed doors. Character assassination. Because I certainly want that question and response. Okay. You have a question? Are we going to answer? Yeah, no, no. She has to go back to the mic and ask the question again. Oh, are you getting some? No, oh, I wasn't sure. What did I say? <laughs> <laughs> say, say no comment. I'll say no comment. No comment. Okay, I'm, I'm doing the camera mic. All right. Hi, Gary. You're up. I, I, Han, throw in half the press there at the work, work sessions. Did Tim, Tim should attend too, work sessions. Oh, we're, we're, yeah. <laughs> okay, Mary Beagle on the bottom in the Heike room. If they are general working sessions, uh, I hope that the selectmen realize that they authorized for there to be a camera. There is a whole setup for microphones and to, so that these meetings can be recorded and so the public can see them. I understand you're saying that they may be personal issues or litigation issues. Okay, that's a closed door session wherever you are. But I think you've had some meetings down in the hiking room that have just been work sessions. And I'm saying if that's the case, they need to be taped. Thank you. Uh, Steve, go ahead. Yeah. Like I had said earlier, when I first got on the board, actually I, I took over from, it was Mr. Longabar's seat. He decided not to run again. And, uh, that was the seat that I ended up with at the time. Um, we did all of our meetings at night. And over the years, we weren't getting people, you know, running. For, uh, I mean, we were very lucky as far as we brought Sydney Johnson on. She's, she's been a great help to us. And uh, I mean, God rest her soul, that poor. But, you know, she worked third shift sometimes. She wanted to go from there to a, a meeting, you know, instead of trying to go home and get a cat nap in and then come back out. But all the Okay, Mark? Uh, I think there's funds in the budget for recorders, so if, I don't know if you expect the selectmen to record the meeting themselves or or have somebody come in and record, I have, I, I would have no problem having meetings recorded. The only problem there might be is that if it's a short notice meeting, you get the recorder right there. Thanks. Other questions from the, uh, from the floor? Krista just said she'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm always looking for clients, so sure. Any other questions? Hearing or seeing none, uh, Steve, you want to give oh, a you got one here. Oh. Come on up. Uh, John Marklin, I'm going to just throw the log ball in there for you. Uh, could you just tell us, as selectman, what are your top three issues you see facing the town of Alton during your tenure? And what 
what would you like to see addressed during your time as selectman if you're chosen? And, uh, and just a comment, I, I greatly wish whoever is chosen would really work on the website, town website, so that we can have an agenda for the meetings ahead of time, because I, I truly would love to attend the meetings. I'd love to see the agenda beforehand to see what's on. Uh, so you can't use that as one of the issues. <laughs> Why don't you start with you, Mark? Well, what I, what I really want to do is take the position and work for the voters and what they, what they want. One of the biggest things we're going to, problems we're going to have is uh, taxes and the uh, people being able to afford the increase in taxes. The economy is not uh, turning around as fast as everybody hoped. Housing prices are way down and a lot of people are underwater on their mortgages and the other issue is going to be to try to keep the uh, town government <coughs> from uh, growing too fast to keep up with the uh, rate of the recovery of uh, the economy and that's the only real issues I see right now. Thank you. Thank you. Steve? Yeah, I think we were very fortunate uh, here in Alton. Uh, we were very land rich in that. And we had a lot of beautiful homes put up around the lake and stuff like that. And they, our tax rate, I think, is 1307. I mean, and if you take a look around and look at the other area communities, you'll see that they're a lot higher than what ours is. And I mean, you can't beat what we have yet. And, you know, and that is also. At the same time, we've been able to work on the infrastructure of the, the town. We've continued to pave roads, do things that had to be done. We've had some wonderful projects, the railroad park, which is being worked on, the senior center, which is being worked on. And uh, I'd just like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. And. Uh, I'll call her Thank you. Any other questions from the floor? Hearing and seeing that, I will ask you to sum it up. Uh, you get up to 30 seconds if you want to make a plea for votes. Steve, you're first. Oh, I'm first. Um, like I said earlier, uh, I've been on the board for 12 years. Uh, the last two years I was a little sick. I ended up going into some major surgeries and stuff like that. But um, I'm back and running again. And uh, the one thing I did do was is I made sure that I kept on abreast of what was going on in town. I call the town administrator on an everyday basis if I couldn't make a meeting, and I asked him what happened, I wanted to know, you know, plus I would get the minutes. So, uh, I guess that's it. Thank you, Steve. Mark? I'd like to thank everybody for attending tonight, and I'd uh, ask that you vote for me in the March election, and I look forward to serving you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we can't wait for the election. The next uh, contested race that we're, uh, we have up front here are uh, two candidates running for uh, one term on the library trustee. It's a two-year term, Ruth Messier and Shirley Lane. Uh, we'll ask Ruth, please, uh, to give up to a two-minute presentation. And uh, I've sort of been 
I spend a lot of time doing things in the town, but I've sort of been out of it for recent years, and I'm coming out of retirement. I give you all fair warning. I'm not going to keep my mouth quiet very much. I'm running for the library trustee for two years. Our Gilman Library is a source of information and activities for patrons of all ages and interests, whether a longtime resident or a newcomer to Alton. A visit to the library will present a hub of activity, providing many faceted and vital services where we all come together to learn, read, familiarize ourselves with town business, and socialize. All avenues of life in Alton can be found there. With so much going on that involves our community, the library is the most important resource. Although library activities continue to increase in all areas reflecting associated costs, the current library trustees have been diligent in their budgeting efforts. Giving due consideration to the current economic situation, five line items have been cut to $1 in an effort to keep them open for the future and the proposed budget is within the guidelines established by the Board of Selectmen. I congratulate the trustees and will be honored to work with them. I'm an avid reader, aware that books and printed material are being challenged by the technical age. No matter the challenge, I'm a firm believer that books will always be with us, and I will continue to be an avid reader. As a library trustee, I'll make a commitment to help our Gilman Library move forward to meet the challenges of this fast-moving technical age and the ever-changing needs of our citizens. I'll do all that is necessary to provide some guidance and secure funding for these necessary devices. Thank you. Thank you. Right on, right on the money <laughs> uh, Shirley Lane. Thank you. Welcome to Candidates Night. My name is Shirley Lane, and I have been a resident of Alton for 24 years and a taxpayer for 37 years. I am a widow and a mother of four children. My son Richard and my daughter Robin both live in this town. My son George and my daughter Lauren Muse both live in Massachusetts. I am a proud grandmother of seven grandchildren. I am a member of the Alton Garden Club, the Ladies of the Lake Quilting Guild, and the Order of the Eastern Star, for which I had served as treasurer for 20 years. I have served as, treasure, as cemetery trustee for 15 years and been chairman for 13 years of those years. Part of my duties as cemetery trustee has been to keep and report all financial records to the trustees of trust funds, prepare budgets, sell grades, and oversee all work done in the nine cemeteries under our jurisdiction. Since 2003, I have been the elected school treasurer and I am responsible for all the accounts in both the Alton Central School and the Prospect Mountain High School. I am running for library trustee because I think my background as school treasurer and my talent for record keeping may be of value. I also have a deep rooted passion for reading and greatly appreciate the value of books for enjoyment, education, and research. The library trustees will be increasing this year to a five member board. It is a new beginning and I am looking forward to contributing to the transition. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, do we have questions from the floor? <laughs> could you tell me how you could uh, perhaps improve the library <coughs> look, uh, throughout the town? And for the record, your name? <laughs> Lauren Carr. <laughs> Uh, we'll start with you, Wanda Shirley. Um, improve it in what way? I, I think it is a fantastic building. It's been improved by uh, expanding. I think it's marvelous that they have that meeting room downstairs for use for any of the um, social activities and um, um, functions that go on in the town. And uh, I myself have given a cemetery pre presentation down there twice, and I think it's a great um, forum to be able to put across um, some of the uh, things that are going on in Alton, so that so people can understand them a little better and have a question, have their questions answered. But I think the library is very well run under Holly. I think there's no way to improve the the books and the curriculum that she has in there. She's expanded to um, um, 
the uh, computers, so that anyone in the town who wants to come in and use the computer system, and I think she has it very well under control that it doesn't get abused, and I think that's very important. Thank you, Shirley. Ruth. I agree with everything she said about the benefits and, and the library. It's excellent. I'm there at least two or three times a week, so uh, I see everything that's going on. I know we do have to do some upgrading on the computer system, not the computer system for the public necessarily, but the computer system that handles the library technical aspects. Um, I would like to see some programs developed. We already have programs for the children. We have um, reading programs. We have discussion programs of books. There's just about everything going on, but I would like to see something developed between the new senior center, perhaps, and the library. Um, I find Holly and her staff are fantastic. And I just want to work with them. I want to work with the trustees and all work together to do whatever has to be done to keep the library going and keep it going forward. Thank, Thank you. you. Other questions? State your name. Steve McMahon. Um, it's, is there anything down there that you would change or that you would see that you think needs outside of the computers that you were talking about that you think need to be done down there? And how would you go about doing it? Ruth will ask you first. Um, I think there isn't anything in the world that can't be improved upon. <coughs> it's a matter of working together. But there are just so many programs in the library, uh, anything for children, anyone of every age, people interested in history. It's just a matter of working with what's available and making it better. There can't be anything I can say specifically because they have a wonderful program. And anyone in town that's in business can go in there for help. Anyone that's new to town can go in and find out about the town. So um, I'm looking forward and hoping I get your vote so that I can work with them to do whatever the group feels. The trustees are the management of the library. Holly and her staff are the ones that do so much good. Thank you. Thank you. Shirley? I agree with everything. Ruth said. <laughs> Do we have other questions? Uh, think, oh, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought that was it. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I, I think, I, I don't know if everybody is aware of the genealogy program that they have uh, started down there. I would like to see that expanded. I think it's very interesting. I had a woman call me from Colorado and come up. <coughs> she was doing genealogy. And her family has been around Alton. In fact, I think they were one of the founding fathers in the town. And she was looking for our cemetery records. And I helped her as much as I could. But I also told her I know there was some information at the library. Well, she found a wealth of information and thanked me profusely for leading her to the library. But I do know that Holly has started that program. I'm very much interested in genealogy and history, naturally. Uh, being attached to the cemetery. That is our uh, history of the town. To me, it originates with the cemetery. And uh, Holly is doing an excellent job on that, and I'd like to see that expanded even more. Thank you. Other questions from the floor? archives room and you want to know anything about the town of Alton, just ask them to get in the archives room. It's fantastic. Seeing no other questions, uh, <laughs> we'll give you a minute to sum up, uh, Ruth. Me? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't come with all my credentials and everything because anybody that knows me knows that over the, I, am a, I am one of those rare animals that is a New Hampshireite. 
I'm not from anywhere else. I mean, I'm 81 years old, and except for the first five months of my life, those 81 years, I'm from New Hampshire. Uh, and my husband grew up in Alton, so therefore I'm an Alton citizen for many years. And when we get talking about families and children, shall we get into it? Uh, my husband passed away last year. We've been married 54 years. I had 10 children, not all still with me, some are with God. Um, I have 20 somewhat grandchildren, and I don't know how many great grandchildren. I keep losing track. I need my calendar to keep track because it has dates on there. Um, but other than that, I do thank everybody that came tonight, and I thank the Rotary Club for offering this. Um, as a library trustees of the governing board of the library, including custody, management, they have the responsibility to secure sufficient funds to provide and maintain adequate library service. I thank you for giving me this opportunity to present myself as a candidate. And on March 13th, I would truly appreciate your vote for a two-year term as a building trustee. Thank you. Thank you. Shirley. I'm not going to tell you how old I am. <laughs> I have to keep reminding myself because I can't believe it. <laughs> I have enjoyed serving this community for many years, and the library trustee's position is a link with all aspects of the community by means of a vast array of resources and technology. My term as cemetery trustee expires in March, and I am not running for re-election, so I will have the time to devote to the library. I am asking for your vote so that I may continue to serve Alton by supporting the staff and members of the Gilman Library. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, your candidates for a two-year term to library trustee. And the final contested uh, uh, Contested race for the evening is library trustee for one year. We have Jeffrey St. Cyr and Pamela Martin. Uh, Jeff, you're first on the ballot, so I'll let you make a presentation. Thank you, Mr. Northridge, and thank you for the all time time of Robert Club for hosting tonight's event. I also appreciate you all taking your time out uh, to join us this evening to learn about the candidates on March 13th. Good evening, and thank you for attending tonight's Meet the Candidates. To learn about the many citizens who will be on the ballot on March 13th. My name is Jeffrey St. Cyr, and I'm running for the position of library trustee for one year. I lived in Alton for the past 18 years, attended Alton Central School, and graduated from Prospect Mountain High School in 2007. I also recently graduated from the University of New Hampshire with a degree in hospitality management. I have served my community as a member of the Alton and Prospect Mountain School Board for the past five years, and I've represented Alton, Barnstead, Belmont, and Guilford in the New Hampshire House of Representatives since 2008. I have dedicated much of my time over the past five years while attending college to serve my community. I decided to run for the position of library trustee to further serve my town and participate in town government. This year, the library trustee board is increasing to five members based on the town meeting vote in 2011. One aspect that I feel our town can work further on is how other town boards, commissions, and trustees can work together to benefit our community. There is great work happening across all areas of town government, but one thing we do not have is a coordinated way to communicate out to the citizens and members of our community. I believe the library is one area that may lead this effort. Back a few weeks ago, I made an offer to the Board of Selectmen at the Alton School District Deliberative Session about establishing a free, <coughs> free system where we can communicate directly via email to our citizens who want to receive town updates. Think about this. But say a thousand citizens signed up for email updates from Town Hall. Think about the topics we could promote. Events at the library, parks and recreation programs, public meeting, peak meetings, and events like this to encourage citizen participation. To further expand on this effort, what if we made an effort to promote online's pre Alton's online presence through social media, highlighting the great events in this community, including summer events at Alton Bay or even Winter Carnival? What would this do for our community? Hopefully attract visitors who may not be planning to visit our community, encouraging them to spend time, including their hospitality dollars right here in Alton, vacation in Alton, and again, maybe even possibly move here. We will never know the effect that we could have by having a coordinated communication system to the citizens and visitors about the town of Alton what is happening in our community. <coughs> and I'll conclude and finish my remarks at the end. Thank you. Thank you. Pamela Martin. Hello. 
Perhaps this year, some of you have seen me. I worked at the kitchen uh, at the Alton Sinew Center, which is very beautiful now. I hope everyone gets to stop in and go for lunch. Um, this summer, I had the opportunity to work for the New Hampshire uh, Lakes Association, and I was the lake host down at Alton Bay all summer on the weekends. And I hope to see you there this summer as well. I moved to Alton about eight years ago to work at the Gilman Home. The first thing I did was to go and get a library card, and I found everyone at the library very friendly and helpful. I've continued to enjoy the enriching atmosphere of the library, including the monthly book chat meetings. This year, I had the time and opportunity to volunteer, and with Holly, our librarian, the staff, and other volunteers, a new program was planned and implemented called Oscar Night at the Movies. To our delight, it has been very well received and attended. We're looking forward to launching other programs that are in the planning stage. I decided to run for this position simply because I love our library and I also feel fortunate to live here in Alton. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Do we have any questions from the audience for these candidates? Lauren Carr, I'll have this ask the same question I asked the two candidates before. What would you do to improve the services of the library? And we'll start with you, Pamela, on that. Oh, please. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think we're very fortunate here. Alton is um, a small community, and I think we have a very vibrant, enriching library, and new programs are being planned all the time. Uh, Holly's wonderful, the staff is wonderful, we have a great group of volunteers, and uh, I personally, uh, I'm sure as, as Ruth and Shirley mentioned, everything is up for improvement, but I don't have any opinion on that right now. Jeff. Thank you for the question. I, I don't have anything specific that I'd like to improve the library. Um, I think part of it goes back to the outreach efforts and how we market ourselves. I think that goes for all town departments, whether it's a town hall, the library, police department. I think there are ways that we can improve the way we communicate to our own citizens. I think one thing that uh, maybe some in, the, in the, the community may like to see are not necessarily adult education classes, but, it, but classes that we can bring in outside speakers, outside consultants who are experts in their field to provide uh, their knowledge on a specific topic. You know, one thing I hear even as a school board member uh, from this, the senior, the senior uh, citizens who live in our community is nobody knows anything about Facebook, social media. You know, it's a great opportunity for them to be able to interact with their grandchildren, and I'd be more than willing to teach our own members in the community how to interact with social media. Um, it's a very common trend with the younger generation. Uh, it's growing across America, and I've experienced managing social media for you know, Facebook pages with 55,000 followers um, across this country, and I'd be more than willing to lend my expertise to the library to, to help them with their marketing efforts. Any other questions? Hearing or seeing none, we'll wrap up and we'll go to you first, Pamela. Oh, gee, thank you so much. Um, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this. It's obvious I'm not a public speaker, but I would like to thank people that I do know in the community for encouraging me to do this and being very supportive. And um, I will say thank you to everyone who's here tonight. And uh, as, as I mentioned before, I left the library. I volunteer there already, which I will continue to do. And um, just thank you very much. Thank you. Jeff. Again, thank you all for coming this evening. Um, I stop, still, my offer still stands out to other town boards in this community about how we can market ourselves. Um, I appreciate your time coming here this evening. Um, certainly the library, as well as some of our other places in town. We went to the new senior center. Hopefully we'll become the center of our community where we can have these outreach efforts uh, or programs that have been discussed here this evening. You know, Alton is, not only Alton, but the state of New Hampshire is, is quite the place for political activity, but certainly the first in the nation primary. 
what if in a few years, and you know, when the next presidential <coughs> cycle came through, if we had all our, our political candidates coming through Alton, stopping at the senior center, stopping at the library, um, you know, certainly now is the time to start thinking about candidates for governor, Congress, the state legislature, and now is the opportunity to start having candidates stop in over the summer so that the citizens of Alton can meet the various candidates to make an informed decision to come to the primary as well as the general election. So I think there's a lot of opportunities that we have. It's only a matter of effort. It's only an effort of how we communicate ourselves uh, out to the public to encourage uh, citizen participation. Um, I encourage you to read. You know some of the articles that are coming out in the Bay Sider about the elections, if I may continue for, for a okay. About some of the topics that will be voting on March 13th. There's a lot of hot button issues. Um, I encourage you to look at what's in the Bay Sider. Um, and I do appreciate tonight when I asked a question regarding some of our candidates, about focusing on the issues, because mm -hmm. that's really what matters most in our community. And I spoke for about 10 minutes at the end of the all School District Deliberative Session, and I also wrote an article about it in the newspaper today. And I take it dear to my heart, and I hope that all of you will, will as well. So thank you all for attending. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the candidates for one year as library trustee. Uh, also, I'd like to say don't forget to get out to vote on March 13th at the high school all day long, 7 to 7. Be there. We expect a real good turnout this year. And lastly, I think as moderator, just an observation. I've been doing this for about 15 years. And I've never seen the group get as hostile as it did today. And I don't know what the answer to it is, but I got to tell you, it's not fun doing this anymore. It used to be fun because everybody in the community came out and, and listened, uh, uh, got a lot of information out of it, and everybody had a positive attitude. We just have to do something in this town to uh, quell the negativism that I'm seeing. And I don't know what the answer is. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>